Hello everyone. One of the pieces of feedback that I have been most grateful to receive in the sessions that I have done recently is when the participants look back and say, wow, it's already 90 minutes. We didn't notice the time pass. Many of you will be expected to take sessions, whether they are trainings or lectures, and you will have to hold the audience's attention for long periods of time. How do you do that? How do you engage the audience to be able to stay with you mentally for such long periods? I have had the privilege of seeing many teachers and teacher trainers in action in the last few years. And here are five techniques inspired by the best teachers and trainers, which you can use to make your sessions more engaging and effective. None of them require any props. All of them can be done online and offline. And all it takes is a little bit of preparation and planning to integrate it into your session. Let's dive in. The first technique I want to talk to you about is called do now. We've all been there. We arrive at a session on time and we are waiting for five, 10 minutes, waiting for the other people to arrive. Rather than penalize those who reach the venue or the Zoom call on time, why don't we use this period for something productive? Why don't we help them reflect and engage on the topic that's coming up or gather a little bit of feedback so we can shape our session more accurately with the people in the room. For example, you could put up a slide saying, what's your name and organization? What is one thing that you're looking for from this session? And finally, you could add something like, what did you have for breakfast today? Now, people could put this into the chat or in an in-person session, you could have this shared by different people in the crowd, gives you a stronger sense of who's in the room and gets them thinking about what they want from this session. As I make the introduction and set the context, maybe in the meantime, as requested, you could just drop in your name and the name of your organization, as well as what you'd like to know from this session. Everyone who dropped a message on the chat, thank you so much. Those who haven't, please feel free to uh, add it in. So very quickly, I also put a slide together just so I can introduce myself. The second technique is called norm setting. When we start our session, most of us set the agenda, which is what we want to cover. But not always do we remember to also share the norms for the session, which is how are we going to cover it? You could share specific or broader guidelines around how they could engage and what's okay to make it easier for them to participate in the session. For example, I usually tell people, Feel free to put your questions as I go through the session in the chat box. I will be keeping an eye on it. Or here are three sections that we will be covering. At the end of every section, we will have a short period for the major doubts you have, and there will be a Q&A section at the very end. By sharing these, you help them to know what's coming and how they can be a part of it. And before we begin, quick housekeeping from my end. First, let's chat. I am super happy to take your thoughts, running reflections and questions on the chat. And we can also have uh, some spaces where in case I have any questions, please, please be active on the chat. Would love that and find it helpful. Second, let's talk. I am also hoping that we'll have spaces where we can have discussion and they're like Ashwini said, also have a Q&A section at the end. And if ever you feel like an urgent need to speak, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, finally, at the bottom, that one line is perhaps the most important one. This entire session has been architected for you. And so let's shape this together and let's figure out what we want to focus on and what we want to run through, depending on what is of most use and interest to you. All right, so let's get into things. The third technique is called positive narration. The idea of this is to encourage those who are doing things you want them to do so that others see you praising them and they also do it. For instance, you would want people to turn on their videos on a Zoom call or give you a thumb or in person it might be something like moving people at the back move to the front. In such situations, 
if you also say thank you shabna thank you amy thank you rahul as they turn on their videos or give you a thumb it encourages others to also do the same sounds good so far if all is good please a thumb would be helpful if you have any doubts feel free to raise your hand super dupan thank you chaynika thank you ankit thank you arti thank you mary perfect thank you michael the fourth technique which should be obvious is called questioning there is a world of literature out there around how you can use questions to make your sessions more engaging and effective but at the very least i would urge you to ask the question about the topic before you introduce the topic itself for instance what do you think are the problems with the education system today or what do you think are the most disastrous effects of climate change and go around the room to get responses what does this do it helps the audience think about the topic at hand so that they are more mentally ready to absorb the information and it also gives you some clues around the areas that you might need to emphasize or the misconceptions that you might need to break for this particular audience so as a member of the professor practice so we were fascinated to pumps like of what people think is just obvious and what it should be actually crop the yeah. so first of all like uh, already gosh you said that in parking knowledge so we were saying the level of content and subject matter mm. the what we were discussing is that actualizing student potential uh, okay so actualizing enabling supporting student potential cool uh yes please the next time we will go there to you both the viewers and then you have to submit that yeah yeah we will just for I would make it more tangible by saying their role is to facilitate learning experiences. Yes, sir. Right. What I am doing, standing here, is facilitating a learning experience. The fifth and the final technique, the one that I love the most, is asking for takeaways. At the end of the sessions that I do, I like to keep some time for. asking people to share their takeaways from the session so we go around the room with everyone sharing one thing that they are taking home or one thing they will do differently because of this session and if it's on a zoom call it might be asking them to put it on the chat what does this do three benefits one every participant reflects on the session and finds that one or two things that they want to take home with them two others hear or read what the takeaways are and everyone gets reminded of things that they might have forgotten about and three you yourself get a sense of what your participants were able to meaningfully take away what are the highlights of your session and this is good feedback for you to take forward to do the session better next time so what would be helpful is if you could fill the feedback form that ashwini mentioned after which in case i don't know ashwini if the form also has a question for takeaways from the session yeah it does okay it would be helpful if you could share it on the form and maybe even on the chat because i think it's helpful to see other people's state takeaways so those were the five techniques inspired by the world's best teachers and trainers do now norm setting positive narration questioning and asking for takeaways if you liked what you heard feel free to hit that like button if topics like this are of interest to you do subscribe to the channel and definitely do share this with your colleagues and team members and friends who you think could benefit from this thank you so much for watching and wish you the best